Hi, I'm CJ Elmer with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. So if you're in the market for a new stock combo, we've got a 2024 Cimarron Lone Star sitting behind us here. This is a 24 footer. Uh, we're gonna walk you through this trailer, but before we do, we're gonna show you a drawing of the trailer to show you how it actually lays out. Like I mentioned, 24 foot on the floor. This is a standard 7-1 tall, standard 6-10 wide. This one has a front tack room on it. It's a three foot, uh, three six short wall on this one with a four foot offset. Uh, but we're gonna walk you through this trailer, show you a lot of the, the extras on it, talk to you about how the Cimarrons are constructed. First and foremost, you're looking at all aluminum construction. You're gonna have an eight year structure warranty, three year hardware warranty, and then a, a tire warranty that we'll talk about when we get kind of back by the axles. Uh, but before we kind of jump into this, um, if you look at the front end of this trailer right here, a couple new things on the 24 models, this became standard. You'll notice the three marker lights at the front, the button, those are those LEDs. So not a big power draw. It's a good look. We we're doing that to a lot of our bigger trailers, you know, trainer, um, loaded up livestock trailers, living quarters. That became standard on the 24 models moving forward. You're gonna get the polished stainless nose on this one. Then, if we look at this hitch, so this hitch is made by B&W, and the little backstory on this was the Cimarron was up there checking out some of their robotic welders. Uh, at the time, the hitch that they were using got, uh, their manufacturer got bought by a distributor. Uh, Cimarron was kind of having a hard time getting these hitches. So while they were there, they got talking about that, and B&W said, let's just build you one. So. American made B&W, uh, it's got a really good reputable name behind it. This is about the third generation that we're looking at here. Um, the, why, the reason why is we just continue to evolve with this. The last version had a real tall handle, uh, didn't have this, this lower hole drilled into it. And now you get this lower profile handle. Well, not as big of a deal on this trailer here, but when it gets to our big trailers, again, those trainer trailers, those big living quarters, the potential of them hauling them with a hauler, with a, a semi, something along those lines. We had to get these couplers up into this uh, sleeve a little bit more. So that be always became a challenge. We'd have to go with a different brand uh, coupler itself. But this one here, we've got the capability to slide it up with the lower profile handle. Um, it also has the ability to, if I lock it in that position, I could either put a snap there or you can throw a padlock on there to lock that coupler up. But again, it's been nice to work with them. Always nice to work with Simron, just evolving some of these uh, options that we have on these trailers and, and we're really happy with how this setup uh, works today. Okay, underneath the gooseneck, pretty standard, just a manual crank jack on this one. Handles located over here on driver's side, tucked away. You got this nice little plug right here uh, to actually secure your seven pin plug an insert for it to stay out of the way. We've got lights hooked up right now. Uh, but with this here, you're gonna notice that the spare is located up high. A lot of times this foot's down low and the spare is located there. That's how we used to build them. But we kept having so many people wanna add the hydraulic jack setup and it's got a larger footprint than what we're looking at here. So this would have to be relocated, made no sense. We said, hey, Let's elevate this, let's get it up out of the way. That way if we do decide, have a customer wanting to add that through our parts and service department, this is one less thing we have to worry about. Less time, less money for you. So on these 610 wide trailers, this is elevated up. If you wanna swap it out, you can. The bracing is also already here for an aluminum battery box if you wanted to add that. Usually that's a good uh, piece when you're adding the hydraulic jack on rather than a, a plastic tray. It's nice to have the actual aluminum box to store your battery and lock it. You can throw some other items in there, but again, that, that bracing's already there. So again, saving you time and money. When we get to wider trailers, this isn't as big of a deal. We can actually have this located down low because we have a wider box. Uh, so it can accommodate that spare without having to move it in those instances. The other thing on Cimarron's is the length of this gooseneck. This is eight two long. A lot of competitors will run a 7.6 to 7.8 long. This one here is 8.2, so you have more storage in there. I also like the way that these trailers pull. I think that's part of it on just the balance of it. But if you're running a long box and you drop your tailgate, a lot of other those manufacturers, your tailgate, you can't get behind 
your actual tailgate and work between the trailer and your truck itself. With this longer nose, you can drop it and still walk through there. There's still a, a, an alleyway there for you. One of the other things is, is, while we're talking about it, is the gooseneck drop wall. So standard is 50 inches. That's been that way for a long time. About early 2000s, uh, it was 47. Then the trucks got taller, so the manufacturers moved to a 50. So that's been the case for quite a while. Well, what's happened? Dodge and Ford have a taller bed, height, and then with the new GM body style, same thing. Those went up about two and a half inches. So what we want is, is we want bed clearance, but we want trailers running level. So ideal is about eight, eight and a half inches of clearance. I can put my pinky on top of the bed, maybe just graze the bottom of this trailer. If we have that, you know, the chances of you tearing up a bed have drastically reduced. I'll never say you're never gonna tear anything up, but um, now we've really reduced those chances. I mean, think about the price tag on these newer trucks, tearing up a bed is not ideal. The other thing is we want equal weight distribution. We want this trailer to run level. So now we can adjust that coupler, have bed clearance, making sure this trailer's running good and level. The easiest way to tell this, um, look as you're driving and you see newer trucks with older trailers on them. One or two things will happen. They either have hardly any bed clearance and the trailer's running level, or they've extended their coupler, the trailer's nosed way up, and they're running on their back axle majority of the way. That's not ideal. So we've gone in and made this a 53 inch gooseneck drop on these type of using trailers. Uh, now we'll take it a case by case basis. If you get in into air ride, 17 fives, 19 five wheels, you know, we might stick with the 50, but again, we're also raised in the box of the trailer with those instances there. So, uh, but this one here is gonna have the 53 inch gooseneck drop. And again, a lot of these trailers on our lot are gonna be set up that way. This one's white sheeted, that's standard. Silver metallic, charcoal metallic, black are probably the most popular uh, color options. There will be an upcharge if you wanna to go to one of those. Custom colors can be done. Uh, this last year we did red, there was a Pepsi blue. Uh, so again, you can get into some of the customization. Now, as we look at this tack room, again, this is the RTG setup. Uh, so it's the ready to go package. What you're gonna have is again, we have a three and a half foot short wall, four foot offset, uh, but in this instance here, as we approach, you're gonna just notice the doors open. We've got on it a four-tier blanket pull rack on a gas shock that swings out. Brush tray on the door for smaller miscellaneous items thrown in there, your fly sprays, your brushes, any of those type of items there. And then you're gonna have a fold-up step. We like to add on fold-up steps where we can, especially to tack rooms. Look, it just makes it so much easier getting in and out of these tack rooms from where I'm standing to this bottom rail. If I have to make that step, that's pretty big. So having that fold up step kind of breaks it almost in half, not quite, but close, making that transition coming in really easy. Now this door is a 42 inch wide door. And the reason why is because of the swing out saddle rack. It's on a gas shock as well. This one's got four pads. These are adjustable so I can slide them up and down if I want, I can take one out if I want, completely up to you. But by having this swing out, that's why Cimarron does this 42 inch wide door. There's a couple of reasons why. One, look, I can still transition in and out of this tack room, whether it's swung in or out, you still have some space. But mainly, if you look at, as I start bringing this in, now imagine you got some big Western saddles on here. Um, if you notice this gap right here, there's still a good amount of room. So we're not dragging saddles on these door frames. A lot of competitors will run a 36 inch wide door with a swing out. Cut that down six inches, now you're gonna start dragging saddles on those. And you can't just work in and out of the trailer with that actually swung out. So you come in, rubber on the floor. You've got a partial boot box, four footer that goes across the gooseneck. Another great place for storage, throwing miscellaneous items that can kind of move around in your transit. Uh, sit down on it as a bench if you're hanging out in here, or if you want to hop into the gooseneck area, it's a nice step there. You're gonna have carpet on the deck and the gooseneck drop wall. Again, look at the depth of that nose. You've got two windows so you can create a cross breeze, look out. 
if I didn't have windows, I couldn't sleep in the nose of one of these guys, I'd get a little claustrophobic. I like to be able to see out. And again, that cross breeze makes a big difference, but a lot of room in here for a mattress, you know, bedroll, sleeping bags, whatever you want. Uh, definitely a lot of storage there. Over to the right, you're gonna notice a, a storage tray. That is gonna be for our plexiglass that I'll show you when we get to the outside of this trailer. But that's where that's gonna store there. Behind me is gonna be a shelf, 18 inches deep. It's got a two foot lip. It's got rubber up there too to hold items in there. Again, great storage. You got a clothes bar here so you can hang clothes. They're not taking up room in the back of your truck. Uh, if you're showing off of this, anything like that, you can hop in this tack room and change. And again, just have a nice place where things are actually gonna store. Behind that is gonna be your bridle hooks. So these are aluminum powder coated. Cimarron builds these themselves. I really like the height of these, the gap, and then the depth off the wall so you can really hang a lot of items right there. And then you're also gonna have your carpet behind there protecting the, the wall, protecting any, any of your tack from rubbing on the actual aluminum itself. So you got carpet behind there. Behind the saddle rack is gonna be a 25 gallon gravity feed corner water tank. So you just fill at the top. You got a valve at the bottom. You can put a, a bucket under there or you have a hose, put a ball valve and you can run it outside, fill up your buckets. If you're at an event, hydrants a long ways away from packing buckets, traveling in the summer months, maybe you have somebody that only likes water from home. You've got that right there. It's definitely a nice piece. And that's kind of wasted space back there. That's why it's really nice to have those corner water tanks. We can always add those after the fact too, if you'd like. And then right up above the door is actually gonna be an LED light. So that's an OptiBright light. They put out a ton of light, it's LED, so not a big power draw. Um, that was, again, an, an upgrade we continually made, and then Cimarron eventually just made that now as the standard LED light. And one of the very last things is up on the roof is gonna be its frame for an air conditioner. Same thing we looked at for that battery box you know, the spare tire located out of the way. This is one more piece that's already taken care of for you. If you wanted to add an air conditioner, again, through parts and service, you know, have to have a, a 30 amp breaker package and then the air conditioner. Maybe you want to do a crank up manual vent or a 12 volt vent. You can do that. They all take the same footprint. So that part of it's already done, which is going to save a lot of time, a lot of hassle after the fact, if you're wanting to add those pieces on. Really easy to operate that fold-up step. Again, that big door, you're gonna have welded hinges with grease certs, so you can maintain those. Get something a little squeaky and you wanna put some grease to it, you can. The other thing is on these hinges, you're gonna notice right in the middle, there's a brass rod that runs in the middle there and it runs the length of this hinge. Well, there's a groove cut in that whole rod. So when you start putting grease in there and open it, it's wanting to actually take that grease and put it throughout that entire hinge. So again, a lot easier for you to maintain. Now this one here only has one tack door, but if you look at the top of that tack door, there's gonna be a drip rail. And that drip rail is actually an extruded piece by Cimarron. It's not like they just take a piece, a strip piece of aluminum and tack it up there and call it good. No, that is actually an extrusion that's gonna go over feed doors, tack doors, and what it's trying to do is it's trying to keep moisture away from getting into that door and trying to work back in um, for example, I mean, we had a heck of a snowstorm the other day. It'll, it'll warm up. I mean, the snow's already gone. So when snow starts to melt or you have that moisture coming off the roof in the daytime and then at night it freezes again, it can get in there making those doors really hard to open, maybe tearing up weather stripping if you yank on them too hard. Uh, but again, that's trying to keep it away. And again, they've taken that just that far by doing an extrusion strictly for that piece. On your top rail, you're gonna have a couple of those LED marker lights, those buttons. And then in the middle of where your axles are, you're gonna have a 16 inch awning light. Another LED shoots down and out. We prefer these rather than the pedestals because the pedestals stick up and protrude off the trailer. It's great for a tree to knock off. Um, not to say you can't knock one of these guys off, but again, drastically reducing the chances of it. And again, it shoots down and out. Uh, nice feature there. You got tie rings, got three of them on each side. 
If you wanted to add more, you can. Just wherever there's an upright post, we can add more. And then here's that air gap I was telling you about. So we have the plexiglass. So because this is a slant load, we're dealing with different lengths. This is the shorter side on the stall area versus the longer side over there. Then we've got an escape door. So a lot of things to work with. If I'm gonna take out this plexiglass, I'm gonna take out, for example, the passenger lower first. Then I'm gonna take like a uh, Sharpie and some painter's tape or masking tape because it won't leave a real sticky residue. And I'm gonna tape all these together and I'm gonna write passenger lower. I'm gonna do the same for the upper and then I'm gonna do the same for the driver's side. Because when I go to put these pieces back in there, it's not a puzzle. Now I gotta figure out where everything goes. It'll save a lot of time, a lot of hassle, a lot of bad words by you knowing exactly where those pieces go. But that track is built on all the Lone Stars. It's already there. So even if a trailer doesn't add plexiglass, you can add it after the fact. <clears throat> now, axles on this guy. We have two 7,000 pound Dexter rubber torsion axles, electric brakes, 16 inch aluminum wheels, the silver with the black accent, really ties in well with the extrusion, you know, the smoked plexiglass, just a good look to it. You've got 10 ply Goodyear tires, now, I mentioned the warranty a little bit ago, but on this one here, the vendor that Cimarron uses for their wheels and tires, you have a one year, no questions asked warranty on these tires. If you catch road debris, you have a blowout, you catch a nail that can't be patched, they'll replace your tire for one year of when you purchase the trailer, no questions asked. You also have a bolt-on fender versus a weld-on. Again, gonna save you a lot of time and money if something happens to this fender itself. We can unbolt it rather than having to cut a welded one on, put a new one on and have that welded on. So again, uh, saving you some time and money there. On the back gate, you have a single back gate, two air gaps, plexiglass at the back there as well. Uh, you have to keep in mind, if you live down dirt roads, you'll know this. The back of your car, back of your truck, Typically what happens is, is that dust will accumulate at the back, whether it's the bumper, um, anything along those lines, that, that wind swirls and wants to hold that. So it's really good to have that plexiglass or solid gates at the back. I mean, it's never gonna be 100% sealed, but if we can reduce the chances of that dust getting into the stall area, especially from a respiratory standpoint of, of whatever we have in here breathing that, by closing up those air gaps, it's gonna reduce that stuff getting in there. So it's good to have that plexiglass on those back gates or again, going with a solid. But on this instance here, single solid gate with the plexiglass, you're gonna have another load light right up here in eight inch. All these lights are on, this, on these switches back here so we can individually turn them on and off. Your rear rubber bumper, if you wanted to add a rear ramp for any reason, you could, we just remove that. Weld one on, it'll be a ramp over that goes over the back. Maybe your horses prefer a, a ramp load. Maybe you wanna haul some toys, some four wheelers, things like that, and making it a little bit easier. Uh, you, can, you can do that piece of it. Now, we get in here to the stall area. We've got a couple gates. These guys pin against and lock into place on the side. We also have a foot down low. So it holds that gate on that foot when these are open. This very front stall is gonna be 3-3. Three, three. So when we're looking at our, our normal stall sizes on our slant loads, it's gonna be the same size. So you can use this as either storage or use it as a stud stall. You got the gate, so it's all solid. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, if you're using it for storage, with it being the full gate, it's nice, because you can stack items clear to the ceiling, not have to worry about them shifting, clear to the floor, don't have to things Worry about items shifting underneath horses as, as you're driving. And then from there, you jump back to the next one. Uh, you're gonna have a seven, nine stall there. So, you know, you can easily put a couple horses there. And then your back stall is a little bit bigger. We can keep this gate within the back of the actual opening itself too. So if you wanted to run with these open, you can, but it's nice to have a lot of options on these guys too. They're gonna have a slam latch. 
So it's a heavy UHMW plastic, so we don't have metal to metal contact, creating a lot of rattle. This is aluminum cast piece that's been powder coated. It's recessed to the wall, so we don't have those items penetrating out. Um, you know, no 90 degree angles, sharp angles, anything like that. Uh, Cimarron's done a really good job on staying away from that. You got that kick mat on this back wall. It's also gonna be on the partition wall up front. Um, but if, again, if you're hauling horses, any type of livestock, you've got a lot of different size uh, stall areas that you can work with in here. You're gonna have a couple more LED lights, just like we saw in the tack room. You've got two of them in here. They put out a ton of light. Now, while we're looking up there, we're gonna look at the roof. Let's talk about that. This is standard on every single Cimarron. Doesn't matter if it's this stock trailer, big living quarters, big trainer trailer, small bumper pole. Whatever it is, it's got this roof. It is an insulated roof with an R3 thermal volume. <clears throat> it's a half inch thick reinforced honeycomb design, so it's really strong. So, with all that being said, I can walk on this roof and I won't dent it. We'll take 150 pounds per square foot, take substantial hail, uh, we know that because we had a hailstorm May 9th last year, dinged every single aluminum sheeted roof trailer we had on the roof, on, on the lot, but our Cimarrons were fine. Not to say big hail can't do it, but it has to be big. <clears throat> so it's strong. More importantly, that R3 thermal value comes into play because of what it does for stall area temperature. It keeps it about 20% cooler versus aluminum sheeted roofs. And the best way to tell that is if you come into our lot in the summer, 9,500 degrees on this asphalt, end of the day, I'll take you to one manufacturer of a trailer and you can feel the heat and I'll take you to a Cimarron and you'll physically tell a difference in how much cooler it is in the staller because of that roof. <clears throat> Between the two air gaps, you're gonna have a tie rail that way, if for this instance here, you have plexiglass in, can't throw a lead rope around these upright posts, we've got this tie rail. We can actually just tie them on right there. And that is we work down to the floor. We're gonna have rubber mats, aluminum floor on this one. Like I mentioned, all aluminum construction. Now, this is the industry's best floor. If you wanna tell quality of an all aluminum trailer, crawl underneath and look at the floors. You're gonna notice these I-beams. They're called centers that run across the trailer the full length. And as you start noticing, centers start spreading apart. Typically, it's a cheaper made trailer, lower price point, quality is not, not quite there. On a Cimarron, you're standing on the industry's best floor, four inch centers. So wherever you have a horse, throw some calves on this trailer, they're gonna stand on a support beam wherever they are because of that four inch. It's a 12 inch deck that locks in high and low, like tongue and groove. So as we start piecing it together, it gains strength throughout the entire trailer. But what happens with those centers getting spread farther apart is that's where those pits can, can cause when we have the weight of animals sitting on them where urine can collect and start corrosion. So all, all aluminum trailers, you should pull the mats out at least once a year, depending on usage, maybe more, um, but yank the mats out, power wash it out, let it completely dry. You can assess the floor. If anything needs to be addressed at that point, at that point, Baking soda, you can sprinkle some baking soda down, it'll counteract the acidity of urine and then put the mats back in and you're all set. But you do need to care for these all aluminum trailers and the floors. Uh, some customers will opt to do worm flooring, which we can do on this trailer after the fact. We build a lot of trailers with worm flooring already in there for the customers. So that's a permanent unpenetrable rubber mat. But again, there's a lot of items that can be done after the fact. Maybe you want a hay rack on this one. We can help you out there, again, through parts and service. On driver's side, same thing. Three tie rings. Again, we can add more. There's your plexiglass. Another 16-inch awning light up there. And then we've got an escape door hopping in to access that stall area. If you do have somebody tied right here, you've got a chest bar right there for you. Uh, but it is nice to be able to access some items. Maybe you are just using this very first stall for storage. You know, you can throw some hay, some bedding, some other items. Maybe you've got your cooler. Maybe you're at a, you're fueling up your truck and you want to grab something cold to drink and you have your cooler right there. You can access that. Everybody can still be in the stall area. So I'm going to give you the stock number on this one. 
Again, it's a 2024 Cimarron Lone Star stock combo, 24 foot RTG. Stock number is 5N231761. We do take trade-ins, so if you're looking to upgrade, downsize, we can help you there. Financing is available and delivery is an option, so we could potentially bring this to your door. So give us a call. Anybody on the sales team can help you out. That number is 303-684-3400. We appreciate you tuning in. Have a good day.